Hello everybody, it's Emily again and welcome to lecture three. Today we're going to be talking about nuclear chemistry, so what happens inside the nucleus of atoms. Um, it's pretty exciting stuff, so pretty explosive, so we'll see what happens. Uh, first we're going to start with radioactivity. When an unstable nucleus spontaneously emits small particles or energy in order to attain a more stable nuclear state, that means it's radioactive. So you have these uh, nuclei, and they're made up of protons and neutrons, and they can spit things out. They can spit out a particle, they can spit out energy, and this act of, of spitting things out of the nucleus is called radioactivity. So this process is called radioactive decay. An isotope that contains an unstable nucleus is termed a radioactive isotope or radioisotope. So basically, when you have a nucleus that is capable of giving away a particle or some energy, it is called a radioactive isotope. Not all atoms are capable of doing this, and we'll see later on which atoms are and which atoms aren't. For example, uh, in our last lecture we talked about isotopes, and we talked about how there are three isotopes for carbon. There's carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Well, see, carbon-12 and carbon-13 are stable isotopes. They're not radioactive but carbon-14 is a radioisotope. So this is a great example about how certain atoms can, can give out particles, and certain atoms are stable. They're happy the way they are, and they're not going to be radioactive. So subatomic particles. What kinds of particles are being sent away from the nucleus in this process of radioactive decay? We have a bunch of different types of particles here, so we're just going to go through them one by one. First, we have a beta particle. A beta particle, you should remember, is just an electron. That's all it is. It's the same thing. So the symbol for a beta particle is B with a zero up top for the mass. Remember, we had, we had our accessories for the elements. The top left corner gives you the mass, and the uh, bottom left corner gives you the uh, charge. Well, in this case, it gives you the charge when we're talking about radioactive um, subatomic particles. So here you have a charge of negative 1 and a mass of 0. That's because electrons are so small that they don't really have a, a mass that's worth taking into consideration. So here you can call it a, a B with a 0 and a negative 1, or an E with a 0 and a negative 1. It has a mass of 0, a charge of negative 1, and it's an electron. It's a beta particle. They're the same thing. Next we have a positron, which is pretty much the same thing as an electron, only it has a positive charge, not a negative charge. So we're not talking about protons here. We're talking about very small particles, particles that are just as small as electrons, but they're positively charged and not negatively charged. See, so these are called positrons, and they have a mass of zero and a charge of positive one. Next, we have alpha particles. Now, these are the big guys. These are the largest subatomic particles that we're going to talk about. So uh, they're basically the, the nucleus of a helium atom. So they have a mass of 4 and a charge of positive 2. So inside of the proton, they have two, um, inside of the nucleus, they have two protons, and that's going to give it a charge of positive 2. Next, we have neutrons, which we talked about before. We know that a neutron has a mass of 1 and a charge of 0. Uh, and then finally, we're going to talk about protons, which are basically just a hydrogen uh, nucleus. So it has one pro uh, a mass of 1 for one proton and a charge of positive 1 for a proton. So these are our five subatomic particles that we're going to talk about. You should get really familiar with them. It's pretty easy, just you understand what they are, what their charge is, what their mass is, and you'll be able to figure out how to work with them when we're doing problems. So decay. What happens to an atom when it's under